and make sure that you register with Excel Academy. Let's quickly look at some few questions and slides. The first question is, name the part labeled A. Name the part labeled A. So if you look at this part, this slide is just a part of the fallopian tube. And when you talk of the part A, is just the fibrea. Then state the function of the part marked A. So this part, it normally sweeps the ovum into the fallopian tube so that it can be fertilized. So when the oocyte, when the ovum is being released from the ovary, the first branch which is going to receive this ovary or the ovum is the fibrea. And this fibrea is just going to sweep and then it's going to take the, the ovum into the, the fallopian tube. Label the part marked B, which is just the lumen, and this lumen is the lumen of the oviduct. Okay, let's quickly move on and look at the next question. Name the part labeled A and function. So if you look at this 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 slide, um, this slide is just a slide of a pituitary gland, and we need to understand that the pituitary gland has two sides. It has the anterior pituitary gland and the posterior pituitary gland. So if you look at A, A is just the anterior pituitary gland. When you talk of the function, it just regulates several physiological processes, which includes stress, growth, reproduction, and lactation. So when a woman is breastfeeding, normally the anterior pituitary gland is the one which regulate that process so even when you are stressed it's the anterior pituitary gland which is able to regulate that stress and then name the part labeled b and function so if you look at b b is just the the posterior pituitary gland and the function is just to store and release two hormones so two hormones are being uh two hormones are being are being produced by the posterior pituitary gland and these ones are oxytocin and the ADH or vasopressin. Okay, let's quickly move on and look at this slide. So if you look at this slide, uh, you can look at the epithelium which is just the stratified, stratified squamous epithelium which is non-keratinized and most mostly such an epithelium you can find it in the vagina and also in the esophagus but looking at the glands which are there you need to understand that we have the the glands there so because of those glands this is likely to be the esophagus label the parts a and b so a is just the sabu mucoso mucus glands or you can just say the mucus glands then b is just the duct uh, name the slides. So if you look at this slide, you can look at those finger-like structures, which are a lot of them. So this slide is just the ilium. Label the part shown by the arrow, which is just the, the lymphatic nodule known as the pears patches. Okay. We move on. So we have been given this slide, label the part shown by the arrow. So if you look at this structure, this is just a, a nerve structure. And this nerve structure from the nervous system, it is existing between the longitudinal and secular musculoskeletal muscle. Yeah. So if you look at this, this guy, this is just the, the, the my, myoteric plexus of uh, Oribach. So this is just the my, myoteric plexus of Oruback. The state the function, it innervates multiple layers of smooth muscles. Like I have said, you can see some smooth muscles there and normally this is just innervating it. Where is the structure found? So mostly this uh, the structure is found in the GIT, which is just the gastrointestinal tract. Okay, we move on. We look at this structure. Okay, Label the part marked A. So if you look at A, A as just cells. A are just cells. And these cells are just known as the parietal cells. 
and if you look at this slide this slide is likely to be taken from the from the stomach yeah then label the part mark b so a was the pariento cells and then b which are dark stains are just chief cells this slide is likely to be that of the stomach okay we move on name the slide so this slide is still the stomach as you can see a is just showing the gastric pit b is just showing the gastric gland so the answer there is just the stomach specifically the the band parts okay um then label the part a the part like i've said is the gastric pit and then b is the gastric glands okay let's move on and look um at the next slide so name the slide name the slide so if you look at this slide this slide is that of the stomach and specifically the pyrolic part um label the part shown by the arrow so if you look at um look at a a is the gastric pit b is the pyrolic gland c is just the muscular muscularis mucosa so one thing you need to understand is how these glands are especially you need to know that okay this is the pyrolic side of the of the stomach and this is the fanda side of the stomach so in the in the in both sides there are some gastric pits but when you talk of the glands in the in the fundus you find that the gastric pits the the gastric glands sorry and then in the in the pyrolic side you find the pyrolic key pyrolic uh, glands so if you look even at the the way they appear the the gastric glands and how the the pyrolic glands are appearing there is a big difference in terms of how the structures are okay we can move on um name the slides um when you talk of these slides which is this slide so this is coming from the um intestine part yeah so this is just the ileum and then label the part shown by the letters a b and c so it's just a is just the villi and then when you talk about b which is the inside area which is just the lacteal which is playing a role in the absorption of fats or fats then c is just the simple columnar epithelium we need to understand that the git from the stomach up to the large intestine there you find that we have the the simple columnar epithelium what is the function of the part marked b so it's plays a role in absorption of digested fats so when the fats are being digested when they are being broken down into small pieces so they are normally being um, absorbed in the lacteal place okay label the part shown by a so if you look at the part shown by a a is just the mesnas plexus mesnas plexus okay and this mesnas plexus it's more like the myeteric plexus but the difference between these two is that the mesnas plexus is normally found in the submucosa layer yeah so that's why two is just see, the submucosa layer say the function of the part marked a and b okay so what could this be so this could be the the tonsil yeah this could be the tonsil so a is just the tonsillar crypt which plays a role initiating the first step of the adaptive immune system so we need to understand that we have innate immune system which is the natural type of immune system and then we have the adaptive immune system label the part shown by the red arrow so those are just glands and these glands are just um, these glands are just mucus glands sorry i forgot b b are just the lymphatic nodules which are playing a role in filtering lymph so a was the tonsillar clip playing a role in initiating the first step of the adaptive immune system then b is lymphatic nodules playing a role in filtering lymph so one thing you need to understand is that spleen when you talk of the the spleen 
the spleen will be filtering blood and then the lymph nodules will be filtering lymph and then the the thymus that's where maturation of the t cells takes place okay thank you very much guys for joining me this was dr possibility from excel academy and please make sure that you subscribe to my youtube channel and contact me on those numbers in case of questions